Eurovision Song Contest has always been, well, as camp as Butland, it's always been quite obvious to many people watching it that many of the performers are gay or lesbian or non-binary. But normally it approaches it in a particular way with a certain amount of walking around the edge or a certain amount of flamboyance. Even when it's outright with people like Nemo or so on, it tends to have a little bit of style of Joy de Vivre. And then we came to the British entry for this year. And I was reminded of a word that hadn't passed through my mind in many years. And it was this. The word cottaging. Cottaging is a gay slang term originating from the United Terum, a kingdom referring to anonymous sex between men in a public lavatory. A cottage or a tea room, as they used to be called. I hadn't thought of it in years. It's not really something that, you know, is used so much anymore. And the term seems to have died off a bit. But quite frankly, when you look at sort of the, the Ollie on Anders song, as you can see here, I'm not going to play the, the sound for this because I found it, I wasn't overly impressed by the song either. And yes, I can appreciate what they're doing with the, with the music const construction and the movement of chords, etc. Once we get past that stupid advert. Yeah. Yes, go on. Go on, go on. Here we go. It's presented by Moroccan Oil. Dizzy by Oli Alexander. The first th thing that went through my mind there was, one, someone should piss off down to Tesco's and buy some bo bottles of Silic Bang to get rid of all that black mold and spend two or three hours spraying it on the wall and let it soak it on. And two, they should take a couple of quid down to Primark to buy some clothing. It's not a particularly well-executed piece of staging, in my opinion. Oli Alexander can sing, and he's a reasonable pres uh, performer, but this obviously did not jibe with the public. And then there was the whole fiasco with um, the woman with the unlikely name of Bambi Thug. Um, I don't really know what to make of the of I, I I'll have to call them they since that's what they wish to be called as and out of courtesy I'll do it although they seem to be sort of seeking to be Sinead O'Connor like for for Ireland or something by carrying on. And I don't really see them as really having any real deep knowledge of Irish myth or Celtic paganism. It seems all to be a performance of the silliest kind. Uh, do I share some of the, their concerns about issues in Israel? Yes, but I also found the way they approach them combative to say the least and likely to cause an incident. It was all seemed to be... Uh, it did make for entertaining viewing, I'll say that, where I can imagine older people in Ireland watching Bambi Thug and her, her sort of attempt to do, oh, it's shocking, it's pagan, it's satanic imagery, but it's like, yeah, whatever. Nothing particularly new there for anyone who's ever followed a lot of hard metal or listened to a lot of that. But, of course, the people who follow Eurovision aren't really that generally that sort of listener, although there is a, a small amount of crossover. But for next year, I suggest the British find something better than uh, a dirty bathroom to put their entrance in, because plainly there's a disconnect from what the public would like to see and what the people staging it think is appeals to them.